Today's show is all about what you want to know about us. It is an Ask Me Anything. Nice graphic there, by the way. Make sure you subscribe to this show and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, and a big cardboard bear. Cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz, a.k.a. Jay Riz. Isn't that the... uh, Word of the year or something? Riz wasn't Riz uh, the, the probably. What are, what are the other dic- dictionary companies? Uh, let's see. Merriam-Webster. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the their one. word of the year. Well, it's not their. I mean, it's the, really the young people's word of the yeah, year. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know how to use it. Oof. Do you know? Do I have Riz? No. Okay. <laughs> if you don't know how to use it, you, you don't, don't got, got it. it. You don't got it. Yeah. It's actually Oxford University. Oh, oh, that's who. That's who. See, I knew they were. Do they compete like Oxford and Merriam-Webster? Is that like a, a like showdown a, situation? A real heated rivalry. Yeah. So it's Oxford that named it. So Our dictionary has eleven hundred pages. Merriam-Webster went with the word authentic for the word of the year. Is that true? Well, someone said it's true, according to Kyle. <laughs> that's true. Uh, sources say, and my source is Kyle. So wait, does that mean that Oxford is like the cool, hip, like dictionary with Riz? I guess. How yeah. is that possible? I, I don't know. It doesn't sound like it. Isn't Oxford like there? They have the United Kingdom. Yeah, but they have those weird facts where it's like Oxford was around like before the Mayan civilization. Yeah, it predated the dinosaurs. <laughs> um, here we are. Uh, welcome into an off-season episode of the show. We got an AMA today. Jason will be back next week. We're going to go over our Super Bowl predictions. If you uh, had the privilege of going to myplayoffpicks.com, you can build your own bracket. It'll do the reseeding for you. And um, we'll talk about how we think that's going to go. But mostly we'll be answering your questions on today's show. That is correct. Unless something goes catastrophically wrong with our technology. <laughs> Just setting them up for failure? Because we, you know, it's the off season, so we made some upgrades here. So some of the computers and the gizmos and the gadgets. But just be clear, it's all Al's responsibility. Al, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Everything I seems to be right. recording. Yeah. We'll, okay. we'll find out to in be, about 45 minutes. To be fair, for Al, I did see him and Papa Josh working on the computer. Papa Josh went home already. Very tired. Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. No, we do have to protect ourselves. Um... What else here at the top? We've got the footy awards next week. We'll be announcing the winners on Tuesday with Jason back in studio. You can still vote. Yeah, footyawards.com. You can still vote. Uh, I voted. As did I. So that was that was pretty fun. I put a little sticker on after I did. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> did we provide those? Uh, no, I print I, them. It was a one of one. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was authentic. And the DFS pass is free right now. That is the other big news. DFSPass.com, free during the playoffs, and you can get a little taste if you want to check that out. Yeah. Looks like about uh, 700 of you decided free was the right price. <laughs> you were really into that. You were like, uh, you know what? I've There's been a barrier there, and it and free, it brought the barrier down. All right. So uh, that's get in there. all the DFS, all the props, all that stuff from the amazing, amazing team that we have here. Uh, that uh, works on the DFS pod as well. You can find us on X at the FF Ballers. You can find Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. And I'm at Andy Holloway. Mike's in his customary winter uh, hoodie. It, it is winter, and it has been very cold here. Been very cold. I did something I never I am, thought I would do in Arizona I am yesterday. I loving it. Oh, what'd you do? Well, I was, uh, I was going to pick up the boy from the late night baseball practice okay and um you know you know how kids are they kind of like it when you're at their practice yeah but then when it's like 40 degrees out you're mm, you kind of you like, don't like it so much you don't yeah. like it so much yeah 
I bought a pair of gloves. What? I know. They sell those here? They sell what? gloves. And they were great. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm telling you, they kept my hands warm and everything. You're telling me? Yeah. Everyone else, they're onto something with gloves? Yeah, I bought a pair of gloves now, from, from Target. Like fingerless gloves? or like? Oh, no, no. Those are... Were they? Were I they, don't have Riz, Mike. I can't were, wear fingerless gloves. Were they individual fingers, or was it the the mitten? No, it's not a mitten. Although okay. I, I was tempted. Um, no, it's just a pair of gloves. And then I realized when I got there, you know how parents they just play on their phones while their kids do practice. Oh yeah, you can't. They put um on oh. the on the pointer fingers of the gloves. They put some technology in there that oh, lets you my. control your phone. <laughs> it was the life. That's great. Now, uh, cold weather people here i guess i'm only talking to brooks right the do we not have the technology that they have in in the the mitten where it covers all the fingers you know so you just all you have is a, is a clamp okay but i'm assuming those keep your hands warmer than the individualized i don't finger see why gloves. because of like shared heat I, i'm or an insulation thing I, what is the point i feel like the mitten was the precursor like somebody's like i don't know what to do here <laughs> But I can make two pockets. This pattern is too complex. But then eventually they went from two pockets to like. Someone know. look into this. I only, I only use the regular gloves. I don't do the the mitten. You I'm don't telling you, mitten? gloves were all great. Right. I, right. This is breaking news for all of you out there. We got thin skin in Arizona. Do you find it cold, Brooks, or do you are you acclimated here? No, this is this is cold. This past See, it's couple been weeks, cold, right? we've had this freeze warnings in the 30s. Yeah, that's that's really cold for yeah. even for here. Yeah. I just know when Mike's got the hoodie on. Things are getting serious around here. Hey, it's awesome. it's comfy, man. I know. It's, it's, I know. It's so nice. Um, yeah, yeah. I I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Jay Grizz has got a coat, so he doesn't need to do yeah. anything. All right. So uh, our Super Bowl picks. I have uh, I have the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, over the Buffalo Bills. Well, hello. My preseason pick was uh well looks quite ridiculous now it looked good for approximately what two plays i had the jets beating the cowboys in the super bowl before okay. the season all right so you're keeping the boys in so i'm keeping the boys in all right um it was tight you know san francisco could certainly do it but i'm gonna go cowboys over the bills okay uh jason has sent in his picks he has the 49ers over the ravens and i just have the, uh, <laughs> well are the are the Niners the like the true number one seed? I don't know. Well, I have it just vice versa of Ravens over 49ers. Kyle will chime in momentarily and tell us who the betting favorite for the Super Bowl actually is, which is the 49ers. That's the 49ers. Yeah. yeah, and in my I'm yeah, my my bracket overall is, I only have a couple upsets. Like I had uh <laughs> I have oh, the Eagles on. losing the first round. Oh, what are we back to the mittens? Well, Did you I'm, see it? But uh, Rap Scallion, you're gonna have to chime in here. Um he shared he shared this quote. He says one of the major arguments in favor of mittens is the fact that they are warmer than gloves, and the reason lies in their design. However, he did not write it as though it was a quote, so I wonder did you write that yourself? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, Are you an expert? I am not a mitten expert by any means. I mean, okay, because you can if it's just one pocket for your for your your fingies you can get more insulation in i there. i put one of those hot hand things inside the glove as well like i went you full, were you were i was living. sweating profusely <laughs> uh so you went ravens yep jason 49ers i went with dak and the cowboys um what a, what a difference a year makes when it comes to our perception on on dak and Jalen hurts and and i had tweeted something earlier today just looking at the touchdown to interception ratios between some of the top talents last year, Dak was 23 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, and Hertz was 22 and six. Pat Mahomes 41 and 12. Josh Allen 35 14. This year, Dak is 36 and nine. I knew you could do it, Dak. I mean, honestly, you did. You you've been the Dak believer, and there were doubts. And now Hertz 23 and 15, the exact number that Dak put up last year. Pat Mahomes twenty seven and fourteen, Allen twenty nine and eighteen. So you don't even have like Hurts, Mahomes, Allen. None of them threw for thirty touchdowns. That's wild. I mean, well, because Josh Allen was too busy running in what like fifteen or whatever. Yeah. Or no, that was is that Hurts. I mean, no, and, no, Hurts had fifteen. Yeah, okay, but Hertz, I mean, yeah. it is interesting. Like Dak's probably getting paid. 
this off yep. season. Oh, for sure, will. So, yeah, uh, we do have some news to talk about before we get into the AMA, which uh, should be a lot of fun. News and notes from around the league. Well, this was big. We uh, we were sharing a meal, having some lunch, and then across the wire from every source possible, Pete Carroll out as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And it was reported wild that after the Cardinals game, he planned on continuing coaching with the Seahawks. He said that on his radio show. He he probably doesn't remember saying it, though. Uh, Why? Because of his age? <laughs> yeah. Is that the, it's an age joke? Yeah. 72, man. No, he's, he's, he's young at heart. He's like Papa Josh. Same exact age, same young <laughs> at heart. But this is huge. I mean, big news. Still one of the best yes. coaches in the league, in my opinion. And, um, you know, 11 winning records in 14 seasons, Super Bowl appearances, uh, one win. But now there's a lot of rumors around Dan Quinn in Dallas. Finally, yeah, which makes sense. Now he's turned down head coaching opportunities for a few years to stay as the D.C. Yeah, because he was waiting out Pete Carroll. And maybe. I mean, that's how I feel about this next situation, too. Mike Vrabel. The, also wild. The Titans have let Mike Vrabel go. Uh, trading him was going to be too complicated, and he is being rumored as heavy interest in New England if Belichick leaves, which makes perfect sense. Both those guys' familiarity with those teams. When Mike Vrabel gets fired, my uh, my immediate reaction is teams that are on the edge of firing their coach should fire their coach and hire Mike Vrabel. That is how I feel about Mike Vrabel. I I would I would not disagree. It, like you it might was make, shocking. Like I, I don't think it. You should not be ashamed as an owner or a, a general manager if you're like, you know what, we're gonna keep Matt Eberflus, and then Vrabel's available, and you're like, just kidding, goodbye. <laughs> like that's how I would view it. We we are not. We are not keeping. Yeah, we said not. Look, if this show has taught anyone anything, it's that not is only three letters. It's only three letters, and it comes and goes from sentences. Who who am I to leave yeah. it in? Leave it out. Uh, it was. It was. You said you were keeping it. It was a typo. Yeah. Yeah. We I missed mean, the word "not." It gives you flexibility to put it in or take it out. It was a Vrabel. I mean, he yeah, had no the, shot. That's exactly like the Titans. Look at the roster that he had. He's the coach, and so he manages the pieces that he has. They were not. I mean, we. I thought they would. I thought they might be able to pull it out, but you knew it was going to be very difficult and he's not the one was. that signed Tannehill to this uh franchise uh encumbering deal yeah you know the he's not the one that traded AJ Brown away uh the Bears have fired their offensive coordinator Luke Getze Matt Eberflus is expected to return unless they take my advice and you know the Bears are doing what the Bears have done I uh, Chris Harris tweeted this out like this is a pattern they hire a coach the coach does poorly they keep the coach. They draft the top tier quarterback. They do poorly again that year, and then they fire their coach. And they've done that three straight times, which a lot of people think that this move is setting it up so that they can draft a quarterback at number one. Which, do you have an opinion on that, Mike? Whether My, they should or shouldn't? Uh, I feel like they, if. If they can pull off the heist of talking to number two, I okay, can't Kyle, who's at number two is the, Washington. Is the Manders. It's Washington. Tell the commanders, we're going to take your guy. You better come up to number one and get him. Uh, otherwise, we are going to take him. You you get that move. I, I don't, you can st probably extract some decent draft capital from that. Then you go to number three. I know you want a quarterback. We're going to take your guy and just keep doing that to everyone and move down. And if you can compile enough, I think that while having the elite quarterback is a massive advantage, I think that Fields can be good enough to win if you just stack the team, which I think that they are in a very strange, unique situation they could end up doing. Now, you have to hit on all the draft picks, but of course, you got to hit on if Caleb Williams is your number one guy, you know, it it uh it hasn't been really working for number one overall picks every single time. I mean, Burrow smashing success, but you know, Baker, it he's on what his fourth team. Trevor Lawrence, there has to be huge questions from Jacksonville as they stare at the at the uh 
the the stopwatch that's that's clicking on his extension that is coming in, and then you have this year, Bryce Young. I, yeah, they could have taken Stroud, but he, the point being, it's still really difficult to find a quarterback, and if you can piece together such an elite cast of characters around the quarterback, I think you can still win in today's NFL. I mean, you might be right with the outcome, but I don't have the courage to to make the process or go through that again. Now, I think I would take the I'd take the pick. In their situation with like Eberflus seemingly barely holding on to his job, he might be pushed into how you're like, no, you're going to take Caleb Williams or you're not going to hold on to this job. Uh, so that's news. And then uh, Kirk Cousins did talk about maybe taking a hometown discount in his next contract with the Vikings. You know, he basically said, look, he's been blessed beyond his wildest dreams. He has done very well. The dollars are not really what it's about. You've heard Justin Jefferson, who I think has, I would imagine, a huge sway in the discussion there because, you know, he's got to get paid, right? Yeah, very soon. So Jefferson just loves Kirk Cousins. As a leader, as a quarterback, wants him back. So, look, yeah. that's best case scenario for Addison and Jefferson. For everybody yes. out there, there is not a better scenario than that, in I, my opinion. I, I'm in agreement of maybe you don't think Kirk Cousins is worth the money. He's not. You don't think he's a great quarterback. It's very easy to get rid of your quarterback. It is very difficult to replace your quarterback. Yeah. And if you don't replace them, you can be trapped – forever yep ian rapaport gabe davis sprain pcl okay we have no other news on that whether he's playing yeah not that i've and seen and then aj brown mri and his knee this still, one still is, waiting on that this one is bizarre just that we don't have more info yeah yeah well the nfl already was like hey we'll go ahead and give you an extra day to get better because they're monday night football just feel like he's your superstar wide receiver i would have I would think he would, he would have was, walked. He would have gone from the tent immediately to the machines. That's why I doubt that there's something seriously wrong. Because I, okay. I feel like with all the attention on that team and on the playoffs, you would have already heard something. But I would have loved to have heard he's fine. So, <laughs> yeah. anything else, Brooksy? You got news for us? I don't got news. Any new surprise coaches? Uh, go? Not yet. No, that's crazy though. Pete Carroll. Both the the Vrabel and Carroll. Ones were were bombshells to me. Bad news for Big Bubblegum. Oh, with him leaving. Oh, sales will plummet. He was very. I mean, he know. was keeping them in business. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, How does he not have his own bubblegum company? I mean, he's he seems like a shrewd guy. It's probably because he doesn't want to chew anything else. He's probably in a routine. He's chewing some other brand. He doesn't want to make his own. Just copy it. Yeah. How different is gum? That's the Mr. Beast <laughs> like, plan, right? I mean, honestly. Uh, aside from a little bit of flavoring, gum is gum, right? It's all the same exact chemicals. From what I know, gum is gum, Mike. <laughs> yes. Yes, I believe that is correct. Oh, he's a bubble yum enthusiast. Would it be a peach Kyle. cobbler flavored? Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the key. It's like Willy Wonka flavors. Do you have a favorite? Uh, bubble gum? Yeah, gum. Uh, I haven't been a gum chewer in a while. I haven't either. Uh, I, I liked the old, uh, what are the, double mint? Is that the green package? Yeah, you were into that? Yeah, I liked that one. That's juicy the one with the twins commercials? Yes. Okay. No, no. Oh, yeah. The twi yes, the twins. I'm going to say then the juicy fruit. Juicy fruit was delicious, but it just. Five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it moved you. Bubble Yum. But there was a vol they had the volume. Yeah. You really got a, a lot there. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know what we're doing. Um, quick break. Back with our Fantasy Footballers AMA. That was a preview. The bubblegum discussion was a preview of the AMA. If you liked that. If you liked you that wait. content. What was our uh, discussion the other day? We had another really Ooh. important. I mean. I, shopping carts? It was the yeah, shopping yeah, cart yeah. one. <laughs> where Mike, Mike's mind was blown I at still, the technology. I still don't believe it. You got to try to steal a shopping cart. Let's see what happens. All right. All right. Um, you ready to dig into this? We have questions yep. from everyone about everything. On today's show, sit that mailbag. Mailbag. A -M -A, yeah. oh. I gotta be. I just love shows like this. I love shows. I feel like we are coming down off of a obviously 
intense. Mm-hmm. For us, incredibly successful season, Mike. Oh, I mean, you, yeah, yeah. right before the show, this is a good reminder for everybody out there, if you're a champion. Yes. Take the time every day. It's like brushing your teeth mm -hmm. to troll your league. It can be a, as simple as a, a thoughtful gif. Yeah. Not gift. Gif. No, gif. Yeah, where you go and You just, already gave him a gift. Yeah. Of being in the league with them. Right. <laughs> right. But like me, Mike and I, we, we've got a couple titles, and like some days you throw a gif in, and I'm like, that's a good reminder that I need to go do that and vice versa yeah we're picking each other up keep each other accountable mock your league all right we are jumping into a footballers AMA today and our first question comes from looks like X Jeremy Schwartz writes in and says what is your greatest fear not related Ooh. to fantasy football interesting I like that it infers our true greatest fear does have to do with fantasy football. And um, that would be like when Arian Foster went out that yeah, one year. Yeah. Injury. For a long time, I would have said bees, but I, I have gotten much, much better. What has been the key to overcoming your bee phobia? Uh, immersion therapy. Just, just forcing myself to deal with it. Immersion? Yeah. That's like, like go, going under, like... No, it's just being around it. So, just, like when there was a, if there's a bee there, you know, just take take a breath, kind of wave them off, talk to them. You wave at it. You're not supposed to wave at a bee. Well, I'm shooing them. Really? Yes. I think you just you're supposed to go T Rex on that. You're supposed to just not move. <laughs> well, I shoo them away. I've always had it in the back of my head that the bees can sense your nervousness. That, that and if is, you're real chill, that is a thing that it is said that bees can sense fear. See, that's what I think happens. I think that if you're just chill with bees, they're chill with you because you yeah. see the beekeepers. I even have a friend who's one. They don't put on like clothing when they go and because clear out. they're psychopaths, man. Look, I've I said I've grown. I'm not as afraid of bees anymore. I'm not going to be a beekeeper though. Those, Without any those people, gear on. that's madness. I called a beekeeper madness. here in Arizona because we got lots of bees out here and. There was a hive that had moved into a tree. We got kids. I was like, I don't want this hive in my tree, man. Come get it. And he's like, sure, I'll come get it for this amount of money. <laughs> and they take them and they humanely transport them to bee farms out here in the valley. And I'm just like, okay, he's going to get in the gear. He just walks back there and just grabs the branch and starts shaking it. And then they picked him up and they flew off. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, thank you. But do you have a greatest fear? I have noticed over the last 10 to 15 years that I am genuinely afraid of heights. Okay. And I didn't think I was afraid of heights. When I was a kid, I'd climb fences and jump on the roof and uh, run around. Didn't have any concern. But I think You it were is, closer to the ground back then. I was. Yeah, just my natural height. Mm -hmm. But I, I was also like very sure of my body's ability to move. <laughs> and I think now that I know that falling is a possibility in my life, I... I remember trying to hang up lights on a second story house once and I got halfway up an extension ladder. I was like, this is not, no, not for it's me. It's not happening. I'm not going to do it. I am on that side. I don't need to go up there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, thank you. Uh, Court Zeigler writes in off of uh, X as well says, what is the best? <laughs> okay. This is really an ask, ask us anything. <laughs> what is the best way to eat potatoes? I mean, it's fried. How is it not? Um, what are the other options like? Well, like a baked potato, like scalloped potatoes, a, and a a boiled potato. Fried is French fried. Yes, yeah, that's how I'm going. But I I do like them, you know, like it's in not a, like with your hands or with an instrument. <laughs> that's not the question. No, no, not the best way of consuming. Uh, but you know, you French fry them up, and then I I love like a a good stew where you have just. The real soft potatoes in there. I love that. That's yeah. delicious. Those have got to be the uh, the russet, the brown potato. Don't give me none of those red potatoes in my soup. In the stew. In the stew. Okay. No, no you got to go the, the, I think they're called russet, right? I don't I'm know. I'm seeing nods those are, from our potato yes. experts. Let's no. go to the potato experts no. over there in Deucer's Alley. Here's your expert. The brown one, that's a potato. <laughs> that's, yes. That's, that's, a, that's a potato. Yes, the default is potato. Yeah, the and other ones are red else, potatoes. Yeah. yeah. They don't say like- Orange carrots and then purple carrots. It's just right. carrots yes. and purple carrots. Yeah, would you think of a potato right now in your head? Yeah, what does brown. it look like? It's a brown potato. Yeah, it's because that's a potato. Yeah. 
Okay. Ridiculous. Very helpful. Um, all right. We have – did we have a voicemail question or no? We we had one. Is it gone? I think it's gone. <laughs> I think we've got yes. our first yes. malfunction of the day. <laughs> it was there. There it is. I see one. Can I push the button? You can. All right. We got a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. Lou from Charlotte. My question is, what is the most fun location that you guys have ever done for a live in-person draft? Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah, it's South Dakota, obviously. South Dakota, best place for – no, I we've always done them uh, in the studio, right? Yeah. I mean, we had a great draft out here where the good folks at Traeger came out with their, like, pro, you know, barbecue chef. Yeah. And – made some delicious food in the parking lot. We've also had it where we've literally invited a friend in in a in a full suit and tie mm-hmm. to read the picks off. That's very fun. That were written on a card. Uh, that was a delight. Yeah. Uh, Location-wise, we haven't done anything real special, but we do it every year now we do it in the office and I think that we have a we have the when the trigger guys showed up. We did a, a filming of it, so it's on YouTube if you want to. Yeah, see there's how a behind the scenes. Yep, what's it called? Our league of record draft. Yeah, who's the champ of that league right now? That would be you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, what was your? Uh, there's a YouTube question from at twelve moisty. What was your first fantasy what? football league and <laughs> result? Mine being an auto drafted team with random. That I somehow won. Oh, nice. Not- I remember this very clearly. The very first league I ever joined, which was, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, 17, 18 years ago. Okay. I overcommitted to one team and drafted four Saints. Ah, super duper stack. So it was like Breeze, Reggie Bush, Marcus Colston, and I think that league had like a coach spot. And I was like, Look, give me Sean Payton too. And then the, the actual Saints started 0-7. <laughs> what do you think the record of my fantasy team was? Uh, 0-7? 0-7. Nice. So that was my my debut. The The first league, first football league I was ever in, it was because fantasy basketball is where I started. Same. And some of the guys like, hey, let's try and do fantasy football. So there was, they, they set it up. And I end up not even even being able to be at the draft, so I set it up my auto draft, and I was real aggressive with my ordering, so I got both Larry and Bolton. Oh, two on, Cardinal on the teams. I don't remember how that team did, but the then the like my first real serious year was the the first year in the league of record where I had I got to keep Jamal Charles, and then he uh, immediately went down with an ACL tear. So it was my my first uh, rendezvous into fantasy football. Now I'm in, in the midst of well, how do you rebuild? Yeah, and get picks. Yeah. and do all that stuff. So that was that was really fun. YouTube question from Adam. He says, if two hosts are unavailable for an episode, oh, man, is there another Jay Grizz, or is there another <laughs> emergency cutout ready to stand in? Um, in a related question, they also want to know how many cutouts would you have to go through before a deucer is brought in front of the camera? Like the main camera? Yeah, I think we'd go empty chair. Yes. Yeah, no yes. problem with that. That's wise. Yeah, the deucers are fine with that. I don't think. I think if we tried to put you out here for a show, I think there would be some pit stains that would show up on camera. <laughs> Any of you want oh, it? Man. You want to jump in? Never. Al? I like it back here. Yeah. We would if Jeremy came over here, we would have to replace the chair immediately. It would just it would be so moist. It would be doused. I can't tell if that's a fat joke or a No, sweat no, joke. no. That was a sweaty joke. Okay. That was a sweaty joke, man. No. You you could take the joke that way if you want. What's funny is this is I was we, talking about your excessive perspiration. Yeah. No, it's also wait. true. <laughs> um But we somehow Oh gosh, this feels like it's some, gonna be the curse. Yeah, yeah, this is the real knock on wood moment. Going into year 10, we haven't had it happen. It's I think we've been very, very close once that there was – somebody was already out of town and then – Someone got sick Someone or got sick. And so there was almost this like – How oh, many shows I, I have we done? 2,600 show. shows? Is that right? If you're adding or, or, if you're adding everything together. Okay, so 1539 on the main show and then yeah. all the other ones, and we've never had to do that? Nope. 
I've always figured if that happened, I think you did one. You did one foot cast alone. If that happens, I I will put two Jake Grizzes up. Like if you guys Do are both we gone, have a second one. We've got to have another one. No, there's only one Jake Grizz. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. We got to keep those on. I feel on. like you got to at least miss Pac Man this thing and like <laughs> just put a bow. Put a bow on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've i always thought it, we would interact with, we would do the show, one person, and and then we would constantly berate Deucer's Alley with, like, topics and questions. Yeah, it'd be really unproductive. Yeah, but I, I you know, we'll see. Jay Grizz with a bow. That's what <laughs> would happen. All right, uh, this is a question from Adam Baum over on Twitter. It says, if you could pick any player from a previous era for your team right now, what kind of sandwich would you make while weighing your options? Oh, the old rope dope You got tricked. It even said must answer on it, so I thought for sure. Brooks, what are you doing here? I love what he did there. You liked how he turned it on us? Oh, yeah. So, Mike, if, you had, if you had to handpick any player from a previous era okay. for your team right now, mm -hmm. what kind of sandwich would you make while weighing your options? It's probably a club. Uh, cause have you ever just, made an ooh, actual club? Have I made one at your house where you do the meat no. and cheese and then the other layer of bread and then the more meat and cheese and then the other, the top layer? No, the, the biggest problem would be the bacon. Uh, I know people cook bacon every single day and they're, I have even with the pop guard. Yeah. What's the problem? Oh, the problem is yeah. the, the problem is the, are you more afraid of bacon or bees? At this point, probably the bacon. Okay. Because that is, I've never made any sort of bacon without taking physical injury. Because of, like, uh, of the grease pop. Mm. And Can't you microwave you. bacon and make it that way? What? People are microwaving bacon? That sounds awful. I'm seeing some nods. People do it. There's no way that's crispy. That's fair. I don't think it is. Can you, uh, what, what's the <laughs> newfangled machine everybody always uses? What, air, fryer? air fryer? Can you air fry bacon? Yeah, that you could do. Well, th there you go. If you want to burn your house down. Oh, really? <laughs> That's pretty dangerous. Is, Is it? it? I think so. Huh. Oh, crap. Huh. I thought I was just onto a new Well, idea. I was going to do that like in a few hours. I, was, I have done bacon on the trigger. I have done that before, and I made it out alive. Was it crispy? It was, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, all right. IG question, Mike. This is for you from Nick. He says, okay. I'm dying to know. What is Mike's holy grail Ooh. of shoes? Okay. Mike is a sneakerhead. I do. I, I like the sneakers. I wear Nike SBs. I have a... Uh, a few I pairs. Have a, you have a few I pairs. Have a very extensive collection that I have amassed over the last 20 years. Uh, the, the shoe that I don't have right now, uh, because it's pretty much impossible to do it they made a they did a a, uh, a themed freddy krueger shoe interesting and it didn't make it out of it didn't make it into production but like they got pretty far in the in the sample area so there's people out there that have them i don't even know if they made a size 11 that's of what them. you're looking for yeah but i mean if you ever go to you know like the the resale sites and there's a pair up there we're talking six digit Really? For shoes. Really? Yeah. That's that's how insane people how are for many, shoes and this particular one. You might not want to disclose this, but how many pairs do you think you have? Uh, oh, I, I would say it, it's, it's got to be over 80 pairs of shoes now. What would happen if you got some sort of disease that made you get larger feet? <laughs> and you had 80 <laughs> pairs of shoes right. you couldn't wear. Hmm. I mean, I guess you'd be. I could sell them. I could probably okay. make a ton of cash selling. Yeah, do, my shoes. is that an investment strategy? Do you have like a decent amount of? Do you keep the boxes? I do. That oh, is. That's a, a whole nother. You need a whole shed dude, for boxes. The, the shoe, the, the box problem is is a. It's people don't talk about it enough. Oh in, yeah, in the shoe game. Oh, so it's kind of an underground least, problem. I mean, I don't know. I really, I don't know anyone else who's as, as insane as I do. But yeah, I have, I have all the shoes. But I, I wear them all. Like people. A strategy is buying a shoe and then holding onto it for a couple of years and then reselling. But I always wear all mine. Hmm. So, so yours are stinky. Uh, not stinky because okay. I have so many that I can rotate through and they never stink. All right. All right. Um, all right. Let's go here. Micah says, do you guys ever get annoyed of or with each <laughs> other? Um, or have you never had problems like that? 
I mean, annoyed like you would get annoyed with just like friends that you see every day. I mean, everyone gets siblings. Yeah, I mean, everyone everyone gets annoyed at time from time to time with their their friends or their yeah. brothers and sisters. But no, as in terms of a like a huge issue or fight, we still have not had one. I think oftentimes. It's funny to me because I, I think all of my annoyance has always been just Jason. Well, more Jason. <laughs> because we'll butt heads more. But it's always on fantasy. Yes. Like that's the funny thing. Is like we do get annoyed, but we get annoyed because we think that the other person's wrong about something in fantasy. <laughs> and half the time it's like, no, no, don't that's a dumb like, opinion. You're that's dumb, gonna, and you're going to make me look bad. You're going to make the show look bad, and then he thinks that about my opinion, and then so we argue. But I can't remember being too annoyed with any other like normal situation. No, we all get annoyed with like Papa Josh, or oh, we all get annoyed yeah. with like Al. Yeah, but that's just you know. No, thankfully we've you know been just very united in the vision for the show for the business. Yeah, we just we disagree on fantasy takes sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes Jason's takes, they're questionable. Yes. Jason, your thoughts? I guess That's, he agrees. Yeah. I yeah. guess he agrees. <laughs> Don't say anything if you agree. <laughs> Growl like a bear if you agree. <laughs> uh, YouTube question from Randy. Sounds like all three of you enjoy going to the Disney park. So what's your favorite ride oh. and snack there? Now we're talking. Now we're talking about shoes and Disneyland. These two, uh, well, yeah. not the bear, but uh, Jason himself and Mike are, I would say, like on a scale of one to ten, ten being Disney freaks. Yeah, okay. And one being eh, indifference to the parks. You two are both nines to tens. I I would put myself there. I would. I can explain it this way. Are you or Jason more or equal? Uh, I think we're probably equal. But I've had more opportunities recently to go. It was like it feels like every time Jason plans a trip to go, something comes up and he has to cancel the trip. Mm -hmm. I would go to Disneyland without my children. I would go to Disneyland by myself. You would just me. Interesting. I have just, you done that? I have not. That I've not had the opportunity. But it sounds like a great time. You both love it. I would put myself at about a six. So I enjoy it. We've okay. gone less times. For me, my favorite ride, We only, I've never been to Disney World. Uh, we live six hours from Disneyland right. in Arizona. So we drive out there. My favorite ride is Pirates of the Caribbean. Whew, it's a good ride. Uh, I like how cool it is. It's chill. I love that ride. That ride has gotten better and better the older I get. See? And, and yeah. I, it just, I guess, oh, well, it's slow, but no, it's... It had, it's got I, the nostalgia. I feel more immersed in what's going on. I, I can I can actually see what they were trying to do instead of just being a kid going, "Where's the drops?" Yeah, <laughs> like they were yeah. at the beginning. Where'd they go? Uh, my favorite ride, uh, Splash Mountain, aka refurbed into uh, Tiana's something. That's been refurbed. They're they're see, in the process is, of doing it. Only nines and tens know that. Yeah. The sixes don't know. Wrapped. You know the name of it? Uh, Tiana's Tiana's Bayou Adventure. There we go. Can't yeah. wait. Can't wait. Now I, it's I gonna think, be great. I think the true Disney expert on in our entire like company here is the Rap Scallion. Could be. Could be. Who, I don't know. Who once worked for Disney. But that is correct. So Disney World is better. Oh, All get right. out of here. All right. You're yeah. immediately disqualified. Just just stating the truth. You know, <laughs> Disneyland, it's nice, it's the OG, but Disney okay. World, oh. four parks, we can yeah. go on and on. Well, yeah. I mean, no. You hey, we got two. You can go on and on, walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. Is that what you meant? You get your steps and steps and steps in? Beautiful Florida weather. <laughs> Is that the what? humidity you're speaking What's of? That? Division winning Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, down okay, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. We got, we can't. What? Cut the mic. The this first, guy, see, he's going to win. The first ever chest beating for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Did they, this. were they over 500? I think so. Yes, we were. Yes, yeah. we were. Oh, it's a we. Yeah, it's a we. Wow. He comes from Florida. Locked in. Loves the humidity. Gross. Um, that's funny. All right. Uh, this question's great. Uh, IG question from Trevor. If you were an NFL player, what position would you want to play? Oh. What do you think I'll say? Uh, 
I don't know if you'd rather be. I don't know. I mean, you played quarterback for the flag team. You also played linebacker with me. I think I'm going to put you at. I'll go. I'll put you at quarterback. Yeah, that's what I'm going to. Yeah, go. I'm going to go with. Uh, I which if, is high highs and low lows, my brother. <laughs> I would go if I could play any position. I would play safety. Let me. Oh, safety. Yeah. That's, yeah. Go roam and yeah, get the just, big pick. Yeah. You you go head hunting. You go ball hawking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just blow people up. I am trying to remember, Brooks. Did we ever get you out there for flag football? No. Oh no. No. There is. We never did. I watched you guys play, and I was so glad I <laughs> didn't sign up. Oh man, we, I've, I had this vague memory that maybe we got you no, to a practice. Or we something. got Brooks out for one wreck day of two v two basketball. That's right. And then he was that was it. That, yeah, was, that was done. Couldn't he, handle it. He, he did a formal <laughs> retirement the next day, like it was a pickup game. And he came to us the next day and just said, hey, guys, I just want you to know, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> and I'm out on flag football now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. yeah, because you were going to play flag, right? I was, Yep. You're like, I am formally retiring from all invitations that you may have for me in the future. It was it was so much closer to tackle football than I ever imagined it would be. The basketball was? No, the flag football. <laughs> <laughs> no. We, we play street ball. Yeah, flag is um, it's just no no pads, but it was full blocking. Yeah. So people are getting hurt all over the place. Well, Papa Josh, he's had some serious injuries, right? Yes. Two, two and a half surgeries. I say half because he has a torn ACL right now <laughs> that, he, that he didn't repair. <laughs> yeah. You never got hurt, Al, did you? Nothing serious. Just your ego, maybe? Yeah, right. Dude, Al I, was I a beast. A, I had a rib injury. Oh. Al was a beast on the defensive line. Al was great. Yeah. He's a legend. And he will remind me often that his catch percentage was 100. Yes. Darn right. How many total receptions over the course of about 15 seasons? Four. Four. Hey, four for four. That's right. Yeah. And uh, all right. This question comes in from Ryan over on X. We've got more food questions. Jason's missing them. Best combination with chocolate. Is it peanut butter, pretzel, fruit? Oh, it's peanut butter, full stop. I agree. I don't see how you can improve upon that. It is. I mean, it's truly the best. Reese's Pieces, the peanut butter cups, the, the peanut butter M&Ms are... Do you go? Do you prefer the pieces or the peanut butter M and M's? Uh, the pieces. Okay. Pieces. By it, the yeah, way. it is the pieces. pieces. Yeah. yeah, it's fun to say pieces because people get they get real they get real shape. mad. Yeah, uh, because Mr. Reese <laughs> is his name. Yeah, and they're his pieces. <laughs> yeah, they're his pieces. <laughs> uh, yeah, I prefer those, but I I tell you this, I like the peanut butter M and M's more than the peanut M and M's. Yeah, I think that's a universal. No, it is not. Wait, there's people that there like, are people that prefer the. Peanut. I'm not saying they're bad. Like I'll eat some peanut M and M's. So they're a lot, good. but every like tenth peanut M and M, you get a bad peanut. Yeah, yeah. You know like what I'm talking one? about? A little burnt one. A little, yep. little weird taste a little, to it. Little too crispy. That happens. Yeah, but peanut butter. But it's consistent with the peanut M and M. Oh gosh, they're so good. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy. Yeah. Uh, Greg wants to know if I ever tried the tuna and mac and cheese. Because I think a long time ago, was it on this show where you've mentioned that- I've, I've talked about it. Yes, I have. I yeah. have tried that. Uh-huh. And? It was good for a quick meal. That's what you call your hot dish, right? Yeah. It was good. It's it was good. good. It's good. It was good. <laughs> yeah. Now you're, you're remembering now how was, much you actually liked it. It was- that, It's great. It was pretty good. My wife thought it was grotesque. <laughs> I, and it, I can understand- the like the concept of it, if you're not familiar with putting tuna fish into, into macaroni and cheese, can sound gross. Even looking at it, you're like, oh, that that seems like it's disgusting. It is not. It's protein packed, so it's you know it's good for the body. You're, sure, you get a little um, you know, omegas, right? Yeah, some mercury. Oh yeah, heck of a lot of mercury. <laughs> but it's great if you've not tried tuna in mac and cheese. I highly recommend it. And just whatever. I mean. Blue box, get it. Get the blue box, Mac, get in, and whatever your tuna fish of choice. Uh, <laughs> this is the, you're the evangelist. Well, I, I for mean, tuna Mac, I, I truly am. Yeah, because it's great. It was good. I mean, it, look, mac and cheese affords you a lot. Like you can put stuff in it. Yeah, you can. Uh, what was the moment? This is from Dairy on YouTube. 
What was the moment through the nine years of the show that made you feel like you guys had made it? Ooh. Do you know? The what moment, that, was it um, Was it the Minnesota the, Live show? We do, yeah, well, I'll, I'll often bring up the Minnesota Live show. The reaction from the crowd and the love was truly an overwhelming moment. So that one felt really good. Um, I feel like the, when you're like, man, I, I, I have arrived. Was it the first time somebody didn't say like, "Hey, what do you what do you do for work?" And then you're like, oh, "I'm a podcaster." And then they go, "Yeah, but what do you do for work?" No, because that still happens. Yeah, I know, that still happens. Um, How do you make money? A, I will say a great moment to, to tie back to Disneyland. This was like years and years and years ago, and one of my favorite things is trolling my wife about making the show a bigger deal than it is, and like playing up like no we're gonna go in disneyland i'm gonna apologize right now the my celebrity nature of, oh the fans will be yeah in. like the fan they're yeah. gonna be in there i'm sorry <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stop i'm gonna say hi and take pictures with them and just I'm understand just, yeah I'm, I'm apologizing in advance <laughs> and then literally we walk right in mike <laughs> instantly instantly that's really funny and she just starts which to be fair just so everyone knows it does not happen a lot no no that's like, a rare occurrence so she's just she's laughing and just screaming no <laughs> this is not acceptable so that felt pretty good yeah I, it, it's always <laughs> funny when i've run into people and we'll be talking you can kind of get a gauge like when people are nfl fans and then you go one one tier deeper and you're like oh you're a fantasy player and then at that point i'm like Maybe you've heard of the show, but I've had a couple times where like somebody talks about how much they love fantasy and how they listen to fantasy podcasts, and then they open their phone to show me what they listen to, and they listen to our show and don't realize that like <laughs> I've never had that happen. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we, we do a fantasy podcast. Oh, I listen to a bunch of those. Here's my favorite one, and then I'm like, yeah, that's you go. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's our podcast. That's that's a, a, yeah, I shouldn't. That's what I should do. Yeah. Oh, I'll check out. that out. Yeah, it's a good show. Um. Oh my gosh, Al is reminding me. <laughs> How about this? I'm going to write in a question. Or Al sends in a question. He says, what is your most awkward fan appearance? Go ahead. I, it's it's a funny story. Is it worth sharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. We, it's it's harmless. Yeah, we. I mean, it really, it really is. But we, I did have, uh, in recent history, we had uh, someone have an accident at our home on Christmas. An elder, an elder states person. Yes, they fell, and um, <laughs> we had to call the paramedics. And happy to report, this person is okay. They're recovering. They're fine. Um, but paramedics were there actively helping this person. And then one of them turned to me and was like, are you Andy from the Fantasy Footballers? <laughs> and then gave me, like, the fist bump. <laughs> and I was like, what do I do? <laughs> What do I do? Do I and so well, I did. Heck yeah, man! I did return the fist bump, and then I and I smiled and I was like, "Hmm, hopefully that's okay." How do you not return a fist bump? You have to. I don't think anybody's ever been it's, able to reject it. It's in the code of civility. If someone offers you a fist bump, a fist bump of, you know, like, hello, yeah. gratitude, oh, yeah. just anything, you're gonna fist bump them back. So I, it's like like in the NFL, like so many times you see. A player go up to a ref, you know, and try and trick him with the high five or the fist bump. Now, sometimes you get the refs who are like, you won't fool me. But then a lot of times you just see the humanness of refs. A, a high five has been requested, and I shall proceed, and I will high five you. And you go, oh, wait, I should have done that. Yeah, so thank you for listening. Yeah. The paramedic that yeah. fist bumped me. I appreciate you. Um, I do feel like the fist bump has become more prominent in our society yeah post uh post pandemic covid pandemic. What, what was that i was gonna go pandemic i was gonna call it the pando oh the pando yeah, that's what you were really gonna <laughs> yeah, do yeah but then i was like i'm gonna bail out of this and go to the pandemic but i should have stuck with pando <laughs> you you're like four years in you're like it's ready for a nickname <laughs> remember when the pando hit <laughs> you were you were some kind of something uh YouTube question from Ostrom. Uh, who do you want to win the Super Bowl? Not who do you think will win? I have an answer. It's Houston. If Houston somehow won the Super Bowl, it would be the greatest thing in oh, history. It would be really fun. D'Amico Ryans is incredible. CJ Stroud is... Uh, 
He's in my top three favorite players at this point. I would love that. It would be amazing for his career. I mean, let's let's uh, make some people mad. Is there a team that you don't want them to win? Um, it's hard for me to want San Francisco to win because they're in our division. Okay. So, Which that's fair. People can understand that. I'm trying to think of anybody else in the mix that would bother me. Is there somebody that you actively are rooting against? No. No, I just I wasn't sure if you had one. I don't think so. But um, I'm rooting Steelers. I, I don't need the Steelers. To oh win. yeah, I don't okay, need them yeah, to yeah, win yeah. No, one. no, no, no. Pittsburgh, stop it. Yeah, no thanks. You owe us the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, but I'm, oh, I'm I'm rooting for Cleveland too. Joe Flacco, baby. Yeah, there is there is some very fun chaos that could come from that. But I I am rooting for Baltimore. I want Lamar to win. If it was Baltimore versus the Cowboys, you'd root for Baltimore? Because I feel like you're yeah. a big Dak fan, too. Yeah. Yeah, I like both of them. But as a team, I like the Ravens more than the Cowboys. Crew then wants to know, over on X, says, uh, where did Mike get his Jordan 1 mug? We get that question <laughs> a lot. You sure. Have, you have that mug on your desk all the time. Yeah. And then uh, a follow-up is, whose responsibility is it to buy the trophy for the league? The winner oh, okay. or the commish? So this we'll just we'll give you another quick shout out at sneakermugs.com but it's a, a feller who it it's a real boutique it's all one off like handmade stuff so I don't even know if there's mugs available there or sneaker mugs there's probably really cool mugs there so you can go check that out and in terms of the trophy the trophy is the trophy should be the the league's responsibility because everybody get has a chance to to get the trophy when you win you get to take care of it for a year, you know, like take, part of the dues take, or take whatever. Fun, yeah, yeah, and then take fun pictures with it. Bring it to Disneyland or on your vacation. That's always a good time. Now, like a a ring for, that a for as just for you, you should buy that. Or as we will recommend from time to time, going into the championship game, if it's not you know a maybe it's not a money league, you just you tell you make a, a friendly wager between the two people who are in the in the like championship yeah. say loser buys the ring for the winner but, cool but the trophy should be the entire league i agree with you mike and uh by the way if you need a trophy this is the perfect yeah, place for a fantasychamps.com plug and if you use the code free ring they'll give you a free ring if you buy a trophy or a belt the yeah. 59 so just put ring. them both in the cart put yep. the code in um i've gotten some swag so far Oh yeah, yeah. We got more this coming. Is, start home. <laughs> uh-huh. Good for you. I'm working on it. Um. All right. Uh, YouTube question for the deucers. I'm gonna throw this to Al. We should get just. We need a gigantic CD Lamb. Something. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because yes. we're both celebrating CD Lamb. CD Lamb is our hero. Yeah. Yeah. Let's we'll just, work on that. Like, just put it right in front of Jason's computer. Well, it's between us, so that makes sense. We need to both be able to reach right. it, and the only place to do that is. In between us. I'm making a note. Okay. You got to figure that out. Uh, The Deucers uh, can answer this. Your podcast audio always sounds great. It does. Thank you, Jeremy. What equipment, mics, mixers, et cetera, do you guys use? Well, we use a mic right. (laughs) I got Jeremy to laugh at that one. That's not good. It's not good. Yes. (laughs) Um, We we use one of those, uh, if you remember, those old cassette players. We put the cassette tape in there, and then you hit the... (laughs) You hit like play and record at the, at the same, same time, yeah. and then we go. And then at the end, what Al, you hit stop, rewind, something like that. Yep. Just don't leave them in the car in Arizona. We what are you, we on road broadcasters yeah, right now? So yep. over over time, we have we have uh, upgraded the studio, but now we are microphones. We are currently on road broadcasters. I believe we started on Behringer's. Yeah, Behringer B two, which is a great microphone. So if that's a pro podcast tip, you know it's. I mean, it's not like ten dollars, but it is, if you're serious about podcasting, you want to sound good. A Behringer B2 is should be in your uh, range. And then, Jeremy, anything else you want to fill in there? Uh, we use a Scarlett 18i20 audio interface. We do our mixing in Logic Pro. No, this is good no, stuff. No, I'm just man. kidding. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's been a, an evolution, That's, right, over the years in, in improving quality. And Yep. Mm-hmm. We use a bunch of Blackmagic cameras right now. That is correct. I think they all have Canon lenses on them. Yeah. One piece at a time. That's right. And uh, on the road, we use Shure mics. 
the SM7Bs. Yeah, the, the, the barrier to entry is not high. Like, yeah, it, it's not hard or expensive to get a good quality sounding podcast. It's actually funny now because, like, in the beginning, the barrier wasn't very high, obviously, to to do that. But now you go to like I was at Target, you know, buying gloves, and <laughs> <laughs> and I was walking over in the electronics <laughs> section last night, and they have like a podcasting section with like like clamps and mounts and stuff for you know hooking up and yeah, recording they have, they have a i think road makes a unit like yeah where it's, it's no, no just, that's what it was it's an all-encompassed unit where it has the it's like 149 bucks but it was like the stand and yeah. the microphone and some other stuff i yeah. think it's like the road podcaster yeah something like something that like but that. it's got you know, it's got the mic pre's in it and you record to it and i think you do your now, mixing nothing on it. will make you as entertaining as us that's true. Well, no, nothing you can no. purchase i would say do yourself a favor and sound treat your room that that's yeah. gonna go further than the equipment is yeah. a lot of times yeah, it was actually funny because when we started recording, we had worse equipment, but we were in a bedroom and it had carpet and it was closed and it was like perfect for recording. And then we came over to our new studio, which we needed to build out and treat the room. But in the very beginning, we had better equipment and worse sound Yeah, because it was more echoey. And, and we were like, oh gosh, we like thought we were upgrading, getting a, an official space and it took some time. Um. Well, this is just too big of a question, but YouTube wants to know what has been the highlight of the entire Ballers show. Mm, the friends we have made along the way. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I think that there's some <laughs> there's some seeds of truth in the cliche yeah. there. I think that's probably actually true. Just not in such a corny way. Hey, to be sincere. <laughs> Get off my back. Time. Um, yeah, that's like the things that are fragile draft from Spitballers, Mike. <laughs> Where we were supposed to be drafting fragile things, and I like, drafted fragile you things. You did, you did. Um, you didn't just say it. You didn't say physical fragile. Obviously, the highlight of the entire show was when I dressed up as Taylor Swift. Yeah, that was the real pinnacle. For, I liked Batman for me. a little more. Oh gosh, Batman was a problem, Mike. Batman was too small of a suit. Okay. Is there just one size for Batman, and if you don't yeah. fit in it, then it shows that you're not Batman's. Yeah. I think that's part of the job of being a superhero. You don't get a bigger suit. There's not plus size Batman. You gotta fit in the mask. Plus size Batman. None of us fit in that mask. <laughs> you're darn right. You know what? I didn't Next do it year's I knew wheel of fit. shame. You're getting in the Batman mask, man. <laughs> you're getting the fat man marshmallow <laughs> cheeks. That was a is good there, one. It, Brooks, is there one more question that we should tackle before we close this thing out? One that we have uh, skipped or that you really wanted to hear an answer to? Let's see. What is your most listened to song of 2023? Oh. Probably. What was? Probably some Noah Khan. I'm a pretty big Noah Khan fan, so it's probably something uh, six season or something. And mine would have been from a band called The Midnight. Mm. <sighs> Never heard of that. Sounds yeah. like Batman's band. <laughs> Um, all right. Anything you got for us, oh, Al? Anything yeah. you really wanted to know? <laughs> Jeremy said the intro for this podcast, which, yeah, that's probably that's true. That's the most listened to. Is there a full version of that? Yeah. Like top to bottom? Yeah. With the lyrics? No. 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 no the, because the lyrics are more of just you. It was like a read along with the hey, music. Hey, 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 All right. Well, I think we're done with the AMA. Next week, we'll come in and give you the footy award winners. Yep. We'll be digging into the truth episodes. We will. We'll probably be talking about some playoff matchups and how things turned out. And uh, look, Jay Grizz, he's got a long offseason ahead of him with that quarterback decision to be made in Chicago. Especially when you're hibernating. That's true. He's going to go to sleep and mm -hmm. wake up with a new quarterback, potentially. <laughs> Good luck. We're shutting it down, Brooks. That'll do it. Thanks to everybody tuning in today. All you Disneyland fans out there. Catch you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.